This against Boris de Graeff, who was an international master. Boris de Graeff Bernal. He was a writer by profession. He became an international master the year previous to this event. He was a top Colombian champion. He won the Colombian National Championship this year in 1958. He was born February 13th, 1930. He passed away October 31st, 2011 at the age of 81. Boris de Graeff Bernal. E4 from de Graeff and C5 Sicilian defense, knight f3, d6, d4, pawn takes the pawn, knight takes the pawn, knight f6, knight c3, and you guessed it, Nightorf's variation with a6. Bobby's favorite line in the Sicilian, f4 is the Amsterdam variation, e5 from Fisher. Knight back to f3, queen c7, bishop d3. Queen's knight to d7 and pawn a4. Now, Bobby plays b6 here, but the book move is bishop e7. The book move continues with castles, castles. And by the way, I've taught you this before. In this line where the F man gets pushed, or any line when the F man gets pushed, you want to keep your king off of this open diagonal. So king h1. And now the most common continuation from here we're not in the ECO anymore, but I'll show you the most common line is knight c5. You've seen me play the white side of this quite a bit. If you've been watching me play at all, you've seen me play this over and again. Rook e8, pawn takes the pawn, pawn takes the pawn, queen to g3 here, bishop e6. That is your most common continuation. Now, Bobby left the ECO and played b6, the purpose of which is to vacate vacate the b7 square for his queen's bishop. The Graef castles, bishop b7, king h1 as in the ECO, g6, and I'm not necessarily a big fan of g6, but you know, bishop, you can play bishop e7 to avoid creating the weaknesses, although the bot doesn't seem to like that, so what do I know? But g6 from Fisher, queen e1, bishop g7, f takes e5 here, b takes e5 here, queen h4, Bobby Castles, knight g5. Bishop g5 is better, it gets another piece out of bed, and it creates a battery attack on this knight. Really, get your own knight out of the way, and you get a super attack as well. Well, I mean, de Graeff played knight g5 opening the f-file, but h6 and the knight has to go away. You don't want to block your rook, so back to h3. Now g5 hits the queen, and look at this little doozy here. Now, if you're going to give up a piece for two pawns in this position, personally, I'd rather give up my knight and end up with that battery attack and super attack. But de Graeff with, and the bot agrees with me, right? If you take this one here, you get this. That is very promising, and this king is starting to feel a draft, isn't he? But bishop takes, was played. I think the reason he's taken, wants the knight here is maybe, I don't know, because it attacks in here, but now you got to get rid of this knight, which can't just be captured because another knight comes back behind it. So it's hard to know. King's rook comes to d8. <laughs> okay, one point here is do not play queen c5, which often gets played in these kinds of lines, but it doesn't work here because, speaking of removing the knight, but now I've got another rook that can come in and give itself up for the next knight. So, rook fd8, knight d5, and do not take that. Oof, hopefully you understand that you need to maintain control of that square, right? As you get this, and it's going to be over. The king would have to come to f8, and this is now super attack, so that's check. Ooh, that hurts. King would have to come to e8, and queen g8 is check. You'd have to interpose with your knight. I guess you could interpose with your bishop. Doesn't much matter, because after this, I'm going to grab that with my rook. Don't! Yes, yes, double exclam. Hoo, hoo, hoo. 
And then after bishop takes, then queen g6 is checked. And if you go king d7, queen e6 is mate. If you go king e7, queen e6. Oh, this is actually cute. First of all, if you interpose, that's a scholar's checkmate. If you play king d7, you get the dovetail checkmate. And if you play king e7, you get the swallowtail checkmate. A swallow having broader tail feathers than a dove. Let's go back. Anyway, don't take that knight with your knight. Bobby obviously didn't do that. He took it with the bishop. Oh, yeah. Pawn takes. And yeah, this was a clever try from de Grafe. We have to worry about bishop h7 check. And the way to deal with it, knight f8. Adding a new defender here. And it keeps that nasty bishop from infiltrating on the h7 square. So c4, rook d6, queen's rook to e1, rook e8, pawn h3. That gets a big question mark. b3 is better because right now the bishop is tied to this pawn. So playing b3 liberates this bishop, and then he could play somewhere else. So h3. Queen e7, and that gets the big red X. I think maybe the best move is to hit the queen. Nope, that's marked as inaccurate. My thought is I'm hitting the queen. I'm perhaps coming to f4. If he takes me, that's the thing is he can take me, yeah. But I've resolved some of my problems here, and I've got a slight edge on the eval bar, smidgen. Of course, he'd have to defend here. All right, well, queen e7, not uh, cared for by the annotator, and neither is knight e4. The problem with knight e4 is you're inviting a discovered attack on your own queen. So, in other words, I can force trades and open lines for my pieces. I can open the sixth rank. I can open files. I can open diagonals. The bot recommending bishop b1. I would think rook f3 also remains equal. Just get more pieces involved. Oh, I get a big red x of my own. Oh, I changed it to a question mark. What about queen g3? That should be considered. Just get out of the line of the queen and in line with your king. Hmm. Ah, check mark. First, it gave me an inaccuracy, but then it thought about it and changed its mind. I'm also eyeballing this rook. All right, knight e4. Knight takes the knight. Queen takes the knight. Rook f6. Putting the question to its counterpart here. Right. I, I guess I kind of like knight d7 myself. Knight d7 supports a potential occupation of the f6 square, but it also threatens knight c5, right? If he plays rook f3 here, I might play rook h6 first. I'd either play knight c5 or rook h6. You, you might be able to play rook h6 first and then bring your knight to c5. I get a star. Coming back. Uh, rook f6 was played immediately here. And rook f5, and had this been a game that was being played online, I would have assumed that this was a mouse slip. But why did he play this? Well, I mean, he's pretty much saying trade rooks and let me improve my position. But um, rook takes rook is the best move. And you'll want to take that with your queen. If you take with the bishop, then queen's coming to g4. Huh. You get inaccurate for queen g4. You want to take it with your queen in any case. I've gotten two or three brilliancies tonight, but mostly inaccuracies and mistakes, as usual. So rook takes rook from Fisher. Queen takes rook on a5, and that controls the b4 square. Here you don't want to play. I don't think um, knight g6 is as good here. That's probably ill-advised. It gets a question mark. Yeah, I was going to blockade this, I think. Hmm. I was actually going to say knight d7 can be played here first. And then I saw the arrow. I should have said it in advance so you knew I saw it. All right, a5 from Bobby. b3 at last. Rook d8. Rook f1. Now rook d6. You know, these pawns are real strong over here, but they do obstruct his bishop. But he's pretty much not interested over there anyway. He's more interested in the king's side of the board. This will become valuable to him if we reach an end game. So no doubt the purpose of rook d6 is to come over to f6. Knight g6 here is not as good either, I don't think. Yeah, you still get inaccurate. Okay, so rook d6, 
Queen g4, and I would think knight d7 is good here as well, but Bobby played rook f6, right? It gets a thumbs up, but the point here again is you've got some potential here. Rook f6, rook f5, rook takes rook, bishop takes rook. Now queen f6, and this pawn can become problematic for white at some point, perhaps. Queen e4 is played. Apparently white should try g3. Now knight g6 is played, and now g3 is played. The purpose of g3 is to keep the knight off of h4, so knight back to e7. Now white placed his bishop on h7 right here but he put the bishop down on h7 reached over and the flag fell before he could hit his clock and he lost on time although as you can see this is winning for black if black plays the best move here now which way would you move your king guys to f8 or to h8 because the whole point of bishop h7 is a greyhound player you'd be wrong and i'm going to show you why f king f8 is what white was hoping for here and the problem with king f8 is you move into a mating net you're boxed in by your own pieces here so d6 is a beautiful discovered attack it attacks here and it's threatening checkmate right here <laughs> which means that black would be forced to take the repetition etc so this was a clever try by white again he ran out of time but it would have been a nice try no yeah you have to play the king to h8 and the game goes on from there maybe king g2 knight c8 queen d3 knight d6 blockades i told you those pawns could be problematic maybe h4 queen h6 is real strong here queen h6 is the winning move isn't it oh wait i can play here Oh, it says play there. Oh, I guess I could have played there. All right. Anyway, yeah, let's go back and look at that one again. It never happened on the board, but that's what white was hoping for. And then you're literally forced. Okay. I said you're forced to just take a repetition because of the checkmate threat. Yeah, no, you have to. You have to. You have to do it. You have to. Because if you take the pawn, I'm playing the check. Now, it's not a checkmate anymore, but I do lose my knight. So... All right, that's still going to be a draw because opposite colored bishops. But yeah, if you were to make that mistake and white were to get in that move, just take the repetition and draw the game. That's the safest. I'm sure Bobby would have played here and that would have been, he would have maintained his advantage.